Hello, welcome to everyone who's on the Zoom currently. Um, we're going to give it, um, the attendees are starting to sort of filter in here. Um, I'm gonna give it just another minute or so, um, just to let everyone sort of kick into the system. It looks like it's starting to load. So I'll give it one minute and then we'll go ahead and kick things off with Kelly. Okay, well, good afternoon. Hi everyone, my name is Courtney and I'm the Chief of Staff at the Ohio Chamber. Just wanna welcome everyone to today's Business Academy. We're so glad to have you be on today's webinar. Um, I'd like to start today's session by introducing our presenter, Kelly Borth. Kelly has 40 years of marketing experience and is the CEO and Chief Strategy Officer with Greencrest. Greencrest was created in 1990 and is a brand development, strategic marketing, public relations and digital marketing agency. And the agency is dedicated to serving small to mid-sized business, sorry, small to mid-sized businesses in the greater Midwest and Eastern US. Many of the firm's clients have achieved triple top revenue growth. And with that, I am going to turn the session over to Kelly. Thank you very much, Courtney. And thank you to the Ohio Chamber. Um, of Commerce Business Academy for inviting us to present this webinar. With me today is Kelly Galindo. She's going to be working our polls. Uh, she's also a member of the Greencrest team. So thank you, Kelly, for being here as well. Thank you. If I could have $100 for every business owner over the last 40 years who said, I just wanna know what the best bang for the buck is, I'd probably be on my own private beach right now. That is what every business owner wants. Uh, that's what they want to know, the secret to the magic marketing button that's going to open the skies and make it rain leads, right? It would be like you asking your primary care physician to show you the way to the fountain of youth. There is no such place. But just like the advice you might get from your doctor, there are some things you can do to have the best possible outcome. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. If we were talking about your health, it might be things like eating right or getting the proper amount of sleep or maybe regular exercise or refraining from sun exposure. And of course the list goes on. Today, we're not going to focus on your physical health, but rather your business marketing health. We're going to dive deeper into the best bang theory and what you can do to capitalize on the best marketing strategy for your business. According to Wikipedia, bang for the buck is an idiom, meaning the worth of one's money or exertion. The phrase originated from the slang usage of the words bang, which means excitement, and buck, which of course means money. Let's quickly consider the cost of the lost opportunities. If you take your current marketing budget and subtract your percentage of confidence you have in your current marketing strategy, you will get the lost opportunity cost. If you had a strategic planned marketing approach, how would that impact your marketing effectiveness? In fact, let's plug in some real numbers and do a quick assessment of your loss opportunity. And that takes us to our first poll. So in your first poll, we're gonna ask you to answer the following questions. What is your current marketing budget? And you can scroll down to the second question. What is your percentage of confidence in your company's current marketing strategy? In other words, how confident are you that when you implement your marketing uh, budget today, how confident are you that it's going to produce the results you're looking for? 
Does everyone see the poll? If not, there should be a maybe at the bottom a poll button to. Okay, I'm starting to get some participants now. Great. Okay. We'll give it a few minutes. I think we have uh, a few folks on, so I would think that we'd want to wait to get a few more responses. Still have a few more people who haven't completed it. Um, we're about 58% participating right now. That may be all we're good. Oh, here we go. We got some more. All right, I'm going to end the poll in 10 seconds. All right. So it looks like we have um, a majority who are um, have a budget less than 50% um, anyway, the biggest majority less than 25,000. And of those who answered, it looks like the highest number of people that are confident that when they implement their marketing uh, program, it will produce the results they're looking for. Um, the majority say about 50%. And that's pretty common. That's pretty normal. So that may means your opportunity cost is about 50%, right? <laughs> so we can stop the poll. All right, and go on to the next one. So my best bang theory is that companies need to take advantage of and benefit from a best bang for your buck strategy. They must approach it from a position of strength and knowledge and not by shooting from the hip, which is of course another known idiom. So if we go back to our earlier analogy of your primary care physician and the fountain of youth, what questions might your physician ask you to give you a rough idea of how long you might live? They might be questions like, what's your family history? How much do you weigh? Have you ever been diagnosed with any of the following? And so forth. Hopefully your primary care physician digs deep and doesn't respond with a generic surface level research such as, well, the average male in the US lives to be age 76.1. The good news is that as a business owner, we don't settle on average. We make the right investments to beat the odds. So today during our discussion, we'll focus on how to analyze market segments and saturation levels, how to determine the degree of reach and the proper amount of pe penetration and the right investment to obtain the results we desire to deliver the best bang for the buck. Similar to your first visit to a primary care physician, we're going to begin with an analysis of your business health as it stands today. Analyzing segments Analyzing market segments in order to understand your market position is an important step in the process. Know where you have the greatest potential. It could be through new customer acquisition. It could also be through growing current customer relationships. Is there potential to grow market share? Which markets or what products provide the greatest profit margin for your business? Your bang for the buck will be determined based on the degree of opportunity and profit growth. This is an example from a strategic marketing session I did uh, with a construction company. 
What was interesting when we had the leadership team all gathered around the table to have a strategic discussion, what I learned was 95% of their market share is in Columbus, 40% in Indianapolis, and one and a half percent in Louisville. And just looking at this simple picture, where should the bulk of the company's marketing budget go? Good question, right? Indianapolis and Louisville certainly show the greatest growth potential, don't they? Where do you think their marketing budget has been focused in recent years? The Columbus market, right? Where the company has grown to 95% market share. So this indicated to us that there, this was time for a big shift in their marketing focus. And while this may seem like, you know, a aha moment to some and sort of a, well, that just makes sense moment to others. What we find is that business owners are really busy in their business and they're driving to kind of reach their goals for the current year. And sometimes both the business owner and their leadership team don't have a moment to step back and really do the review and planning that's necessary to figure out where, how am, how am I going to grow going forward? This company that I'm talking about here had a goal over the next 10 years, they wanted to double the size of their business. They were about a $20,000 uh, business at the time they wanted to grow to be a 40,000, I'm, I'm sorry, 40 million. They were a $20 million company wanted to grow to be a $40 million company. But they were also 25 years old and they did not want it to take 25 more years to double their size. They needed, knew they needed to do something different. So that's why they brought us in to kind of have this discussion. What I haven't told you is that 95% market share in Columbus was all related to the home building market. So the biggest growth opportunity that the company had in Columbus was to shift into how their product might uh, penetrate and penetrate the uh, commercial construction market, which was an untapped opportunity for the company. They had focused on only residential builders and not on commercial construction. So that was all, also a focus and an outcome that came from that discussion. So we're going to uh, kind of go to our next poll here. So the first question is, what is your company's current market position? Is it strong, average, or does it need improvement? Secondly, do you know where your greatest growth potential is? Yes, no, or are you just not sure? Third, is there market share growth potential in your primary markets today? Yes, no or you're not sure? And fourth, do you know which markets and or products have the greatest profit margin opportunity? Yes, no, or not sure? So we'll give you a few minutes to complete the, the poll. We've got 50%, we need a couple more. <laughs> All right, I'll give you five seconds. All right, we did great. We got quite a bit of participants that time. Good. So it looks like the majority of you feel like you need improvement. Um, so what is your business's current market position? Um, it seems like we had a, you know, kind of a um, similar response to strong and average, but the greatest response to needs improvement. Do you know where your greatest potential is? 44% said yes, 22% said no, and 33% are not sure. For number three is their market share growth potential in your primary markets. 
67% of you said yes, 33% of you said not sure. Do you know which markets or products have the greatest profit margin uh, opportunity? 33% of you said yes, 67% of you said you're not sure. So we'll kind of go back out of the poll here. Next, let's discuss how knowing your degree of reach within your market will give you a better sense of which marketing tactics can deliver the best bang for the buck. Every potential market is different and offers different marketing opportunities to reach prospects. Your marketing plan should outline strategies for how you will grow your business within each target market. If you don't have a plan, my advice is to get one. Analyze each marketing tactic based on the degree of reach within the potential prospect base. A trade show, for example, although probably not a great example for these COVID <laughs> times, uh, which many of them are still getting canceled, but. Um, so a trade show, for example, may be a great marketing strategy, but it may only reach 10% of the market, those who attend that particular show. That does not make it a bad marketing choice. As a matter of fact, trade shows can be 25% more effective than other marketing in delivering opportunities to have that face-to-face -face time with prospects. So that's powerful. If you layer on email marketing, an email marketing campaign and your distri distribution list for that campaign reaches 60% of potential buyers, that will likely be more efficient marketing spend. But we also know that our prospects engage with us in a number of different ways. So we cannot just be solo focused on one marketing tactic. Add search marketing, and you have the opportunity to capture a good percentage of prospects shopping right now. My point is that you should know what your degree of reach is for every marketing dollar you spend. You should be able to look at it objectively at the cost per thousand prospects reached. If you do this, you will have a better sense of which tactics deliver the best reach and the most cost efficient bang for the buck. The penetration factor is, a, is different than reach. Reach focuses on how effectively you reach potential prospects. The penetration factor focuses on how effectively you penetrate those potential prospects with your marketing messages. So penetration is about ensuring your marketing message is being noticed, heard, and that it gets registered in the intended audience's mind. They know who you are, they know what you do, they understand what you have to offer. Meaningful marketing, uh, meaningful market uh, penetration is necessary in order to ensure your marketing message is heard by the prospects who have a need, that you have provided sufficient opportunity to gain purchase consideration, and that prospects respond. Marketing penetration can be determined by the probability of frequency of messaging needed to elicit a response. However, not all marketing tactics require the same level of frequency so it's important to understand best practices for each. Ultimately, your goal is to reach an adequate level of market penetration to optimize results. So your bang for the buck strategy and consideration needs to address the degree of penetration within those chosen markets. 
I don't know how many of you on here know me, um, but if you do know me, you probably have heard me say this more than one time, but the science of marketing is being in the right place at the right time with the right message when there's a need. So what's the hardest part of that equation when there's a need, right? We don't always know when there's a need. That's why marketing needs to have a certain cadence uh, in order to be successful. Oops. If you, if you have a seasonal product or service, don't penetrate the market when potential prospects are not receptive to what you're selling. Unless, of course, there's a strong value proposition for the prospect to deviate from his or her normal routine. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do things like continue to send your, e, your email uh, newsletter or your physical newsletter or things like that that just keep your name in front of those prospects. But you can back off of the uh, frequency and the degree to which you spend during those times if you have a seasonal product or service. Years ago, I would be asked, is it more effective for my business to run one full page ad or three smaller ads? And the answer, of course, is it depends. How long does your budget need to last? Is this a one time event? Or does this need to get you down the road a bit? My advice is that you have to start somewhere even if that means you do only one thing this year, but you do it really well. It's more important that you do that one thing well and saturate your message within that single medium so that you can achieve the penetration factor that's needed. You will perhaps sacrifice reach, but the impact to that singular audience will return more on your investment than shotgunning across multiple marketing mediums, thereby achieving reach, but not at a level that the message is going to be heard. So you're not penetrating the market. In the following year, add more ammunition to your arsenal and take on a second marketing medium to expand reach. If you executed well achieved adequate penetration with the first medium, you should have built up enough momentum to lessen the frequency and reallocate budget to something new without losing what you've gained. A long term marketing strategy for growth can be very powerful. It is how most of our clients approach their marketing and grow to become known recognized and understood. It's how they become market leaders. And I can tell from our poll that the majority of people that are on this webinar have a relatively small marketing budget. <clears throat> and that's not necessarily unusual. Just know that if you have a dedicated marketing budget and you're willing to invest year over year, you can reach those goals that you're looking to achieve. It just may take a little bit longer on a limited budget, but eventually over time, you can actually have a more fully integrated marketing effort going, uh, going on. Um, it just takes a little longer. By now you have probably realized that getting the best bang for the, bunk, for the buck is more about smart marketing. Most industrial businesses should be spending between one and 2% of sales on marketing. Growth oriented companies will likely spend more like three to 5% and consumer based companies can spend upwards of 20% on marketing, depending on the business, the geographic location of that business and what gets expensed into the marketing budget. For instance, a consumer-based company in Chicago will spend considerably more than a competitor in a rural market. We could say the same thing here in central Ohio. If your business is in, in Columbus, you're gonna pay more for media than if your business is in Bell Fountain, Ohio. For some industries, ad costs are reasonable. 
For others, the cost can be astronomical. The same goes for trade shows. I would caution all of you to keep your marketing budget as pure as possible. I've seen things like cars for salespeople, company logoed wearables, sports venue licenses, travel, sales offices, and corporate events, all expensed to marketing. A truer marketing budget would consist of advertising, trade show cost, direct mail, email marketing, public relations, digital advertising, website, website maintenance, social media, and other content marketing. Also literature would be included in that, so your marketing literature. And underspending on marketing can really handicap your company, and it can be as inefficient as not spending anything at all. So spending too less is like throwing money to the wind. If there's no committed marketing strategy, you just spend a little here, a little there, and this or that, try whatever you, whatever comes into your email box or whatever, you know, some uh, new salesperson puts in front of you. Um, and then in the end, you have very little results. You may sum it up to marketing just doesn't work. Well, I couldn't agree. I couldn't disagree, excuse me, more. What, does that, what doesn't work is the approach. Your approach to marketing and the strategic use of the budget you have available is critical to get adequate results. You don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. Yes, another idiom. Finally, let's learn how this smart market position puts you in a position of strength. Starting from a position of strength makes sense when you really think about it. The smarter you are about your market position, the greater results you should see from your marketing investment. Invest in developing a strategic marketing plan that defines your company's market position and maps out a strategy for how you best compete and how you are going to increase market share. And that's my best bang theory. So now let's think back to that assessment you took at the start of this webinar. And let me ask you again, if you had a strategic planned marketing approach, how would it impact your marketing effectiveness? If you could increase the percentage of confidence in your marketing budget, and put that money to work in smarter ways, how long would it take for you to make that change? I challenge you to be honest with yourself and answer that question. Seth Godin is an author and former dot-com business executive and sometimes known as the ultimate entrepreneur for the information age. He has written around 17 books on marketing, advertising, business venturing, and leadership. His view of the buck for marketing is one that adds weight to better understanding the various strategic bang theories that we discussed today. Godin said that if you are marketing from a fairly static annual budget, you're viewing marketing as an expense. Good marketers realize that it's an investment. So use best bang theory we discussed here to invest in your marketing and get the best bang for your buck. In this final quarter of 2021, it's a great time to start planning for 2022 and beyond. And with that, I'd love to take a moment to answer any questions that you have on this topic. And Kelly Galindo uh, yeah. is going to be. <laughs> so we can um, either raise your hand and I'll let you in or you can use the chat feature and we'll answer your questions. Any questions out there? I'm 
not seeing any hands raising. <laughs> Okay, well, if there's no questions, I will thank oh, you. That one just came in. Okay. How can I measure some of our efforts, for example, newspaper ads? So newspaper advertising can be measured with a QR code. It can be measured with a offer. It can be measured with a um, special landing page to a website that you're driving traffic to. Um, it can be measured through um, how people are accessing your company. So in other words, if you see an increase in the number of inquiries on your website following an ad, or if that your phone is ringing off the hook, um, if you have somebody on your team who's answering the phone, they can ask, how did you hear about us? Um, so there's a number of ways that you can check uh, to see what kind of, um, I guess, traction you're getting from a newspaper ad. Thank you, Carmen. Any other questions? Oh, Carmen says thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, Carmen. I'm not seeing any other questions coming through. Okay. Well, I will thank everyone for joining us today um, during this Ohio Chamber Business Academy webinar. You can feel free to call my office with questions or more information. And we do have an ebook on this topic um, that we um, would be happy to send your way if you're interested. You can simply leave your email in the chat box um, or you might receive a follow up from Kelly. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time today.